You know, hunting to me is something I'm thinking about 12 months out of the year. And so when I'm planning a lot of the different stands or pop-up locations that we're going to be hunting, I'm thinking about future deer activity and future deer movement. This particular location right here is a large food plot that we've got. And I know that the deer primarily are bedding back in this direction right here. Well, the prevailing wind for this location is normally blowing this way about 10 months out of the year. However, when we start getting into that pre-rut, rut, and post-rut, we start having some big cold fronts in this area where the wind's gonna be coming dead in my face right here. So this isn't a stand that we built this early in the year with plans of hunting right now. It's one that we plan on using much later in the year. We know from past history, a lot of deer work the edge of this field. They're making scrapes, they're heading out in the field in the late evening, and then as the sun comes up, they come back the same way to go to their bedding area back over here. So we've built this pop-up with plans for future hunts. We may only have an opportunity to hunt this blind once or twice a year, but in those times when the wind is blowing right into those windows and going out that way, it's gonna be a prime location for hopefully a big buck or maybe somebody's first doe. So when I look at, at setting up pop-ups, I'm always looking at the different shooting you know, angles and stuff here. And I've really got three different shooting lanes here that we're gonna clear out. And, and be thinking about the distances you know, that some of your arrows are gonna take off out of your bow to make sure you clean the canopy up in the right way. But never cut so much brush that you're gonna be able to get picked off when it comes time to move. I actually took down a little Sinisa bush here that I'm using on the blind now. And you know, this blind that we've got right here, I really like its design because it's got all these little loops around it right here where I can go in and brush it up. Now granted, I know I'm probably not hunting once again for some time here, but I like the way it looks now and I can come in and brush it up again as I get closer to it. I also spend a lot of time kind of making some 3D looks to it. I'll find an old dead brush and put it out here and just create that illusion of darkness in there many times. So when you start clearing out your shooting lanes, get in here, pay attention to where you think your best shots are gonna be, but never ever clean so much that you, you're gonna get picked off when it comes time to draw. You know, anchoring down a pop-up to me is one of the most important things. You know, you're gonna have some storms that are gonna come in, you're gonna have some, some bad weather, and you know, really being able to secure all the different lines off to the side to where they can act basically work against each other to keep this thing in, in good position in those high windy days is really key. The other thing is anchoring down the bottom all the way around. You know, a lot of people will only put one or two down you're just asking for trouble there when you're gone, when the wind gets in, can get underneath it. I always make sure and go each corner in the middle when I have those opportunities to really secure it down. The other thing you can do is push a lot of this stuff up underneath there in different positions to help, you know, kind of keep some of the different varmints from getting up uh, inside your blind. And then finally, pay attention to where you plan on sitting in your blind, you know, get in there with your bow or your rifle or whatever and practice raising and lowering, making sure you're clearing everything, making sure there's nothing in the way. And it will definitely help you be better prepared when it comes time for that moment of truth when you're hunting in a pop-up. All right, let's get inside the blind. We're gonna set up our chair here. This is the most comfortable chair that I've ever sat in. You know, chairs are, are very important when you're hunting in, in a pop-up and you've got game dangerously close, you know. A lot of the fabric squeaking, uh, you getting uncomfortable and fidgeting around, and you know, a chair that actually rotates like this one does right here will allow you to barely move with your feet while not making a lot of noise. And it's it's my preferred chair. Now, I'm not saying it's the only one I use because I don't have, you know, the ability to put these everywhere I go. But when I have one of these, I tend to hunt a little better and a little more comfortable. Here we go. All right, now as you get inside your pop-up, a few things to always keep in mind. This is brand new, it's just been set up. You can see all the sticks on the bottom, there's lots of grass. Those are things that can bust you at the wrong time. You wanna make sure that you can basically move in here and not rustle, not make any noise. So a lot of times I'll pick this grass up, I'll clean it out, I'll kick it out where it's just dirt, so I've got nothing making noise. The next thing I wanna do, 
I always want to practice what I'm going to be doing. I want to get in here and make sure I've got ample room to draw. I want to check those shooting lanes. I want to move around to different positions. I want to know where I would put my shooting sticks if I'm hunting with a rifle or a muzzle loader in here. I want to be pre-planning for everything because once again, we're building this pop-up a month, maybe even two months before we're going to hunt it. So we've got time to get in here, spend some time. We're not worrying about busting out the gear. So get it comfortable, get it set up the right way. So when you get the right wind and you slide in here, the deer aren't even going to know you're here. And we've just about got this blind really set up exactly how we want it. I'm going to grab my bow in just a minute and actually practice drawing in here, making sure I'm clearing top to bottom. Got my quiet chair in here from Cabela's. I want to make sure when I wrap this whole thing up that I'm ready to go so that the next time I come to this stand, I'll be here for business. And one final thing when I'm getting ready to leave this area, I always want to make sure and pull everything down that's going to be behind me. I'm not going to be looking back behind me during this hunt right here. So I want to get as much darkness behind me as I can. So when I'm drawing or when I'm raising that gun, raising that muzzle loader, rifle, whatever it may be, nothing's going to pick off that movement and give me more time to make the shot that I'm looking for.